Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So what is a Nerf Blaster that you guys can think of that is as common as mysteriously cheap gum at CVS pharmacies? Well, I've got an answer. You've seen it before. You know what it looks like. It's at every single store on the face of the earth. Don't believe me? Do you believe me yet? You know what this is. You may not have seen them in these exact colors, but you've seen this blaster. This is the Zuru Last Stand. Let's get into it. So the Zuru Last Stand, I believe, is a 2022 release out of Zuru in their Skins series. And I genuinely mean Skins with an S on the end, because, oh my goodness, there are so, so many recreations of this. There's so many versions of The Last Stand out there that it's impossible not to go to a Walmart or a Target or a Costco or a Toys R Us in other parts of the world and not see a different version of this color scheme. This one, as well as the purple one that I showed just a second ago, came in a two-pack from Costco. There's a red one with, like, snake scales on it. There's an all black one with yellow stripes. There's one that's painted clear. This blaster is so mass produced, it seems like it's more common than strife reskins. And I genuinely mean I think it's more common than strife reskins. The semi automatic mag fed flywheel blaster that Nerf makes, I don't know if there's more variations of that than there are versions of the last stand blaster. It's wild. And they're still selling it. So I gotta review it. Starting with the design, since this is a Skins Blaster and it comes with so many different types of paint, I'm going to quickly overview the two different paint variants that I have, but most of the design is going to go over the shell details. So you can see this one looks pretty cool. It's this kind of blue and green camouflage pattern with a skull right here. And the other one arguably looks even more insane, being this purple monstrosity. And I honestly like the way the purple one looks more than the green one, if I'm being honest with you guys. But uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to keep either of these and you guys will see why later. If we actually focus on the shell details, it is a very elegant looking blaster. It looks very well machined. You can see there's lots of angles, very similarly to the Zuru Skins long shot. And there's just a lot of really cool looking details, the stripes on the grip right here. Like it's a very nicely designed blaster when it comes to the shell. Being Zuru, it, it feels like crap. The, the plastic is super squeezy and creaky. You get the point. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a pump grip, a stock, and a cheek rest. If we go over the main grip first, it is actually very comfortable minus one detail. As you can see here, there's a finger troil, but it's flat for some bizarre reason. And there are sharp corners right here and right there. And they do dig into your middle finger and it does feel kind of painful. A simple fix would be just like sand those corners down and then it probably would be a lot better. Better. Otherwise, it's actually a pretty good grip, even though it's a little bit small. As for the pump grip up here, it does fix the corner issue, and it is a very, very comfortable pump grip. I like this pump grip a lot, and I honestly wish I could use this on other blasters because uh, that this blaster is not very good, as you will see later. As for the stock, it's a little bit short, but it's not too bad of a length, and it is very comfortable to brace against your shoulder, even though it's kind of small. It's not very big. I wish it were a little bit bigger. And the cheek rest, you can just put your head up here. It's pretty comfortable. So how does this blaster <coughs> work? All right, let's get into it. This blaster is a cylinder fed pump action revolver style thing. So you load in 14 darts into a 14 dart cylinder. It, it holds 14. You take this, you pull it back, you push it forward and you can fire once. Or it's got slam fire that seems to actuate even when you don't want it to. And this mechanism just gets more unreliable the more you use it. Let's get into the trigger and the smoothness of operation. So let's talk about the priming handle. Um, this is like the worst prime ever. It's kind of smooth to push forwards and it clicks, but when you're pulling it back, it is a horribly gritty prime with a nasty click at the back to rotate the cylinder. The cylinder does hold still pretty well when it is primed, but even still. And the trigger pull is really clicky and in the worst way possible. It's got no pull 
and then it's got this really uncomfortable pop when you pull it in. It's really weird. It also doesn't have like any travel distance at all. Like I would expect a trigger like this on a full auto blaster, similarly to a Rapid Strike, a Hyper Fire, a Percy's, a Mac 100, not on a Springer where the trigger is supposed to be analog and actually doing something important. And the catch, oh my gosh, the catch. It just tells you no, it just doesn't work. Sometimes, it's sam it's just slam fires off darts because it feels like it. And a weird detail is when you prime it, the trigger pulls in slightly. You didn't notice? Let me try and do it again. You see how the trigger is pulling in like that? Yeah, that is like actuating the catch slightly. So sometimes if you slam fire it hard enough, it'll prime and fire by itself. This is a problem with both of my last stands, not just this blue and green one, because I tried with the purple one hoping it would be better, but no, it doesn't. Both of them have extremely, extremely bad catches and slam fire problems. And that's not even the worst problem. Do you think that the N-Strike Elite Surge Fire has bad skipping issues when you put darts in it and you try and slam fire it off? Imagine having bad skipping issues as bad if not worse than the surge fire, just trying to use it normally. You are going to witness these issues in the firing demo, which is going to play in three seconds. Oh my god. Why? Okay. <laughs> they all think the surge fire is bad. It just advanced two cylinders. Oh my gosh, there's still more. Finally! Seriously guys, if you think the search fire is bad, well that hit the target. Even trying to be careful and precise with it, it still skips. What mod potential does it have? A lot, I think. I mean, it's a pump action thing like this, so you could make it mag fed and then hopefully fix the issue and get rid of the damn slam fire. And then you might actually have a comfortable Springer primary that you could use mags with and actually have fun with it. Um, but other than that, what do I think of the last stand? Holy crap, does this blaster suck. And it makes sense why Zuru has mass produced it so much. They wanna get rid of these. And that's really sad because I like the way that it looks. I like the way it feels. I really like the concept of having a compact 14 dart cylinder fed revolver thing to compete with the surge fire. And hell, if this blaster didn't have so many freaking problems, I would say it's better than the surge fire because a stock one of these costs $15. That's $10 less than the surge fire. And while it does hold one extra dart, the cylinder is way smaller. It's way more compact. You can switch the cylinders out without too much issue you and it's actually got a stock and it's actually like pretty comfortable to hold on to and use as a primary but this blaster doesn't work at all there's no way to use it effectively so do i recommend you pick one of these up 
If you want to mod it to make it take magazines, go for it. Because again, the ergo setup and the appearance of this is pretty cool. But if you plan on using this in its stock state, I can't believe I'm saying this, I would way rather you guys go and get a surge fire or something else because this blaster just doesn't make the cut. With all that said, if you do want to get one of these, I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.